through the season where we're at. Amen. So we're going to uh, not here this morning so the young people will stay in. I'm trying to make it right. Interesting for you as well. And I believe that this morning's message will touch each and every heart. Amen. I was reading a story this week about a lady who was going to Walmart. Do any of you folks in here know anything about going to Walmart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so she was going to Walmart and she was in a, a hurry and she was busy and as she was going it was raining it was pouring down the rain and, and uh, she got there and it was crowded and, and she said oh Lord hadn't talked to the Lord all day but got to Walmart but realized she was talking to the Lord she said oh Lord you know I'm in a hurry you know that I, I, I don't like the rain and I forgot my umbrella Lord place. I just need to get in there and get out. And all of a sudden some woman with her uh, backup lights come on and she's on pulling out and she, uh, she said well there it is. So a second car in from the, the entrance. She said forget about it Lord. I got it now. <laughs> you know, sometimes we can be that way with God in our life, can't we? Amen. We can think that we got it all under control. We can forget what God's done for us in a moment, just in a crying out to Him. Amen. But God is faithful this morning. So I want us to look at Thanksgiving. I know that Thanksgiving for us as believers uh, is not just a day or season, but it is a lifestyle. But I think that when we come to Thanksgiving, it brings us to a place where even we as believers we are becoming more aware of what we have and that we need to live our life thankful for what God has done for us. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 15. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 15. I want to challenge us with this thought this morning. For granted or with gratitude. For granted or with gratitude. Psalms 19, uh, Psalm 2 Corinthians, verse chapter number 9, verse number 15. The word of God says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. This morning, I wonder if most of us in here, if we take some things for granted because we live in such a wonderful country and we have so much opportunity. Uh, we, we are very well off. Uh, each of us this morning, if you look at the world in general, uh, you look at what we have, we are very well off when we look at it from a global perspective. Or oftentimes we may look at it in a very community perspective or in a national perspective and we may compare what we have with someone else and we think that we aren't as rich as someone else. But when we look at it as a worldwide perspective, we are very rich here this morning, each and every one of us. Amen. We're blessed not only materially, but we're blessed with family. We're blessed with friends. We're blessed with the future. Uh, some folks don't have that blessing of looking and seeing that there's a future ahead of them, which is blessed. But this morning, we are very blessed. And in spite of, of, of all the things that we have, we are oftentimes very slow with acknowledging the blessings of God in our life. Amen, Brother Seville. We can be very slow with acknowledging the blessings because we become so accustomed to them that we take them for granted. But thank God for times like Thanksgiving, which brings us back to the place where we realize that we have a lot to be thankful for. And particularly here at Thanksgiving, we have to focus our, th our minds upon those things that, that really count. 
Amen. It's a time for us to reflect and look back at all the blessings that we have in our life. And as I said prior, uh, we can also be thankful for all the things that we have in our future. Young people, I want to talk about something this morning. Uh, if the Lord should tarry, you have a very bright future. You can go on and get more education. Uh, you can get the home that you'd like, the job that you'd like, have the family that you like. Uh, Hannah, uh, your future is bright this morning. Every one of you, and each and every one of you is sitting in the sanctuary this morning. Your future is bright. Some of you are living in retirement. Hey, but what a great gift to be able to have spent your time and investment and be able to live off the dividends that, that, that you put in. Uh, some of us are working and, and we're putting those dividends in because we're looking forward to the future of retirement if the Lord should tarry and allow us to have that. Every one of us is looking for a future of being with God in eternity. It's a bright future. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so we look back and we're reflective. We look to the future. We're grateful. But I want to draw us to right here, right now, to the present. To have a heart of gratitude. Mm -hmm. May I ask you this morning, and I'm asking myself as well, do we take things for granted or do we take things for gratitude? And that's what Thanksgiving is about. Paul said, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thank God for the great gift that he's given us. And so the basis of thanksgiving, amen, is to be grateful, to be thankful for something, for someone. So the early pilgrims, they were here at Plymouth for about three years when Governor Bradford called for thanksgiving. Can I read his declaration to us this morning? I don't want to be limping boy in this, but listen to this. It's very interesting to me. Three years in, and so the proclamation for the pilgrims as they settled at Plymouth, the Governor Bradford said, insomuch as this great father hath given us this year an abundant harvest of Indian corn, wheat, peas, beans, squashes, and garden vegetables, and has made the forest to abound with game, and the fish out of the sea with fish and clams, and insomuch as he has protected us from the ravages of the savages, has spared us from pestilence and disease, has granted us freedom to worship God, God according to the dictates of our own conscience. And now I, I your magistrate, you proclaim that all pilgrims with your wives and your little ones do gather uh, at the meeting house on, on, on the hill between the hours of 9 and 12 uh, in, in, the day, uh, in the daytime on Thursday, November 29th, in the year of our Lord, 1,000 Six hundred and twenty-three, and the third year since ye pilgrims landed ye a uh, uh, pilgrim, uh, pilgrim rock, there to listen to ye, pastor, and render thanksgiving to ye Almighty God for all His blessings. You see, the pilgrims realized something that all the provisions had come from God. Not from their efforts, not from things that, that they had secured, but from God. And they were thankful to God for what God had given them. But Paul said this, he said, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. You see, the greatest gift and the greatest thing any person could ever have is Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the greatest gift. Amen. Thank God for the knowledge of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Thank God for the knowledge of His Word. In my life, I've been most reflective. I've dealt with several Alzheimer's patients recently. And sometimes uh, you're dealing with them and, and you want God to move. Uh, one of the greatest verses, and I know I've said this before, is being able to go in and why do we quote Scripture? Why is it so important to have these songs of theology and to be in touch with some, some folks may say, well, it's outdated. Let me tell you what, there may come a time in your life and in my life what some people feel is outdated becomes what brings us to the present moment with God. Amen. When we quote, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. And all of a sudden, there's cognizance in their mind that what they've sowed in seeds in the past, God renders to them in the present uh, that God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank God for His unspeakable gift, the gift of Jesus Christ. 
We have it this Thanksgiving. And that's the real basis of Thanksgiving is Jesus Christ. The unspeakable gift because God loved us. Amen. He could do the greatest work that anyone has ever done. Do you realize this Thanksgiving? Jesus died on the cross so that you wouldn't have to die. Do you realize that He took the place on Calvary? Amen. For the greatest needs is our sins. The greatest person, Jesus Christ, did that for us. The greatest sacrifice. He gave us the greatest gift, eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, this Thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, this Thanksgiving. That we can bow our heads and know that we are in right standing with God. Because God gave His only begotten Son. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Brother Craig, what words can we put to it? It's amazing, Brother Dennis, that God would love us to send His only begotten Son. Let me ask you, have you taken your relationship with God for granted? Or do you take your relationship with God with gratitude? That's what this week's about, Brother Walt. My life, do I take it for granted? Or do I live it with gratitude? It's interesting that in the Word of God, there's over 550 references to thanks, thanksgiving, uh, to, to that of being grateful. And so if there's 550 references in the Holy Word of God, Stacy, to thanksgiving, you see, God wants us to be there. And there must be some benefit to us for cultivating that attitude of the gratitude of being thankful, not taking things for granted. And so uh, when we cultivate that attitude of gratitude, uh, the greatest thanksgiving, amen, really has the most powerful effect in our own lives. When we are thankful people, the greatest effect it has is on us that we are thankful for what God has given to us and thanksgiving makes a difference in us and then it will begin to make a difference around us. Uh, do you ever notice some people who are very bitter and, and some people are bitter not because they don't uh, have anything but because they don't have everything. Bitter because... Not because they don't have anything, but they're because they don't have everything. We live in a culture where, and, and we're starting to wind up with those commercials on television, those commercials on YouTube, those flyers coming to your home of all kinds of things that you must have. And that's the sales pitch. You've got to have it. You need it. Yeah. It's funny. You know, uh, 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 how that from a very early age in our life, we think we need something. Real, really, we, we can live without a lot of things. We just think that we need it. And it brings in this attitude of unthankfulness and taking what we have for granted. See, some, we look around and, and uh, we're led to believe that, that, that people, uh, they're unhappy because they're un. Uh, 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 they're, 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 they're unthankful because they're unhappy. But in reality, they're unhappy because they're unthankful. Yes. Amen. Let me share a few things that some folks have shared with me, and I hear it on a daily basis. But Walt, there's never a week, probably never a day that goes by in my life in working with people. Sister Jean, people don't look at me and say, whatever you do, don't get old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hear that. If I had a dollar for every, we would go, we would go on a little story spot. We're going on a great big, wonderful vacation. Not that I need those things, but I mean, I would be rich because I hear that all the time. Whatever you do, don't get old. Well, first of all, let me just say this. Let me diffuse it and say, well, what's the alternative? I think I choose getting old. 
But you know what? They're really saying, now there's a lot of things that they are saying, but there's some things that I learned, Sister Jenny, from what they're saying, is this, is that when we're not old, and some of you in here, if not all of you, really are old, that there's some things that we take for granted when we're younger, that when you're older, you'll realize how great it was to have those things. So I want to encourage you today, don't take it for granted, but take it with gratitude for what God has done done for you because God is good. Amen. I, I believe that thankful people are happy people, but unthankful people are very unhappy people. It, it's not based on what we don't have, but it's based upon what we do have. Amen. We're richer than what we know. Amen. When you have your relationship with Jesus Christ, amen, and you're, uh, you're, you're eternally secure, and you're, you're, you're wealthy, amen, and when He's blessed you with good things on this side, of heaven. Amen. You're wealthy. Amen. I'm talking about Thanksgiving and having an attitude of gratitude and still taking things for granted. How many of you have ever heard someone say, well, I wish I had one more conversation or I wish I had one more day with my mom? Now, Grant, we're always going to wish and want more. We want to keep those people around us. But this is what I hear folks say. I wish I would have took my loved ones and friends for granted. We're blessed here. You have loved ones around you, family, friends. Amen. Let's not ever take them for granted. But let's take them with gratitude. Amen. God is so good. Thanksgiving has the power to transform us into different people and to transform the world around us into different, a different place because of our Thanksgiving. Paul said this. He said, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think, or may I use this word, meditate on these things. Amen. Do you know what? A life of gratitude will change us to thinking about things that are true and honest and good and pure and lovely and of a good report and it will bring praise out to us. Amen. It will cause us to think and meditate upon these things. And so I want to challenge us this, this morning at this Thanksgiving service. Amen. As we prepare for this week of Thanksgiving. And yet Yes, it's crazy. Uh, there's tr the, 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 there's the trimmings at our table. Folks will be taking care of meals. And there's work schedules and travel schedules and, and agendas that we got to do. But can I say, let's set that aside. Amen. And find a place of gratitude for all that God has done for us. Amen. I believe that God wants all of His people to be happy people because they are thankful people. In the Word of God, Paul writes to Timothy, and he says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. And he goes down through those lists, and he says, unthankful. God help us that in these last days that we're not transformed to the world around us, but we are, are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen. And we're thankful people. Amen. With a heart of gratitude. Not taking things for granted. David said this in Psalms chapter 118, verse number 1. He said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. You see, God is dependable. God is eternal. God is faithful. God is genuine. God is great. God is holy. God is immense. God is independent. God is infinite. God is invisible. God is just. God is majestic. God is pure. God is omnipotent, omniscient, uh, 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 omnipresent. He's perfect. He's persistent. He's righteous. He's sovereign. Amen. But the greatest thing that David said about God is God is good. And there should be a reason in our heart to give thanks. If it's said, oh, give thanks to God, for He is good. May I walk through the Word of God for a moment and help you think about something? I believe that Moses, that patriarch, 
he would have said it this way. He would have said that Pharaoh pronounced a death sentence upon all the boys my age. But God spared me. God spared me. David would have said there was a, a, a giant that came against me and said he would feed my body to the birds and to the dogs. But God gave me the victory and I'm alive today. God is good. Jonah would have said I was swallowed up by a big fish and he wanted to digest me. But oh, God is good. He spared my life. There was a woman with an issue of blood who was bleeding profusely and she came to Jesus. And I believe she would have said this, while I was bleeding and getting sick and growing weak, God touched me. Oh, God is good. Thank you, God. See, there's so much to thank God for. God is good. The Word of God says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. That word mercy means leniency or compassion, forgiveness, kindness, pity, tolerance, charity. Uh, theologically, it refers to a, a, a compassionate, extending, and forgiving to sinners. Oh, the Bible says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, because His mercies, uh, they, they endure forever. God extended mercy, pity, love, compassion, forgiveness to us. God is good. Are you taking it for granted? Or are you taking it with gratitude? You see, God's mercy is undeserved. The Lord is merciful, slow to anger. His plenteous in mercy, the Word of God says. His mercy is intimate. Amen. It's to us individually. The Word of God says in Lamentations, it's the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. So the Lord's mercies prolongs life. God's mercy, it gives salvation. He saves us according to His mercy. His mercy forgives us of our sins. His mercy makes salvation possible. God is good. He's merciful. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He is good. It's interesting, I read a little story. Bobby boy's name was Bobby. And so Bobby was invited to a birthday party to one of his friends. He's probably to the piano. He was invited to a birthday party of one of his friends. And so uh, when his mom and dad picked him up, his sister got his mom said, Did you, Bobby, say to the lady, to, to, to your friend's mom, thank you for the birthday party? He said, Oh, Mom, I didn't do that. Because the little girl in front of me, when she was leaving, she said to my friend's mom, uh, uh, Thank you for the birthday party. And his mom said, Oh, don't worry. You don't even need to mention it. So I didn't. <laughs> You see, sometimes that can be our life. We can think, well, God already knows that I'm thankful. God already knows that I appreciate it. I'll tell a little story here. Yesterday, I saw Brother David. I ran by. I came to his house and I walked in the door and he said, come here. He said, I need a hug from you. He grabbed me and gave me, he said, you know how much I appreciate you. You didn't have to do that. But you know what Brother David wanted to know? I appreciate what you did. Hello. Little Brandy says this thing and I love it. I love it. I love it. She'll grab my cheeks and she'll squeeze my lips out. She'll give me a big kiss. Love you, Daddy. Daddy. You know, she doesn't have to do that. But I'm glad she lets me know she loves me. Last Sunday, Bella came running in the sanctuary, I was shaking hands, and she grabbed me, she threw her arms as tight around my neck as she could. And she said, I love you, Daddy. It meant something to me because it expressed the gratitude of that heart to me. I'm telling you these illustrations because I believe that our Heavenly Father wants that. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For He is good because His mercy endures forever. Paul said, thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. God wants thanks. I'm thankful for America and I'm thankful for what we celebrate 
on that Thursday in November that set aside for Thanksgiving because it reminds me of all I have to be thankful. I want to share two more illustrations and they're of a personal nature. I remember after my grandma passed away, you know, you're, you're reflective. She had some dimensions, she had some things going on that, you know, wasn't the same there right at the end. But I walked in her bedroom. And she lived in a very modest house. Her husband was killed in war. She moved in with her parents and eventually gained the house. And, you know, she did what she needed to do to maintain it, but she didn't have the resources to, you know, make it super duper fancy. But it was always nice and always a great place that was a welcoming spot for us. I walked into her bedroom and I noticed, Sister God, that woman who I'd never heard complain. My cousins and my aunts and uncles, my mom, we lived this, never hearing complaint from grandma. Patches of linoleum that could even match across her bedroom floor. But a heart of gratitude and love toward God. It wasn't what she didn't have, but it's what she did have that mattered to her and she was thankful for. There's been more than one Thanksgiving that I've sat down with my mom. My mom said, you know, I look at my home. It may not be what my home is compared to a lot of other people. She said, but I am so grateful. It's so much more than I had as a little girl. I'm so thankful for what God has given to me. She was reflecting. The other day I was enjoying it. She said, I hope I didn't bore you with my life. I said, no, I, I love hearing these stories. She was telling me, Brother Dennis, when she was a little girl, if she got a doll baby and a chalkboard for Christmas, that she was ecstatic because that was a huge Christmas. And she was thankful for that. We always ask her every year, Sister Bell, what do you want for Christmas? She said, oh, nothing. I have everything that I need. Because you know what? Mom has learned something as a godly lady. She has learned a heart of gratitude for what she has. Amen. I want to be that way. I want others to look at me and say, man, that fellow over there, he has a heart of gratitude for what he has. Amen. He doesn't take things for granted. I never want relationships, my, my family, my friends to be taken for granted. I love them. Even if it's not perfect, I love it. Amen. I never want to take this uh, church for granted. Who you are and what you bring. Amen. I do realize that there are 72 churches a week that close. Amen. God's been good to us. Our doors are open. We pay our bills. We have a wonderful place to worship God. Do you realize that we live in a nation where we can still come and gather together in the name of Jesus Christ and lift our voice? I'm thankful for that. Amen. Do you realize that we have one another that's been bought with the blood and we have folks that pray and love God? And most of all, we have the presence of the Holy Ghost that comes and ministers in our services. I never want to take it for granted. But I want to be grateful. So this morning, I want to change our call a little bit. Not that I don't think there's value in praying. Absolutely, we need to pray. This morning, I want you to stand. And I want you to close your eyes. And as Sister Holly sings, would you just say, God, I never want to take it for granted. I never want to take it for granted. Don't look at what you don't have this morning. But would you look inside at what you do have from around what you do have. And say, God, here I am. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Would you just thank God for all His blessings this morning. Close your eyes.